Now on Sky News Live, Peter Cradley. Good evening and welcome to the show. Well, the leadership crisis continues in Canberra. More resignations from ministers who voted against their Prime Minister, but a PM unable to accept the resignations because he's battling to survive what's left of this sitting week. And then, surprise, surprise, a constitutional issue for the challenger rears its head. Coming up on Credlin tonight... After two years of advocacy, Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull dumps his signature company tax policy after it was defeated in the Parliament. Leadership contender Peter Dutton proposes cheaper power bills, hinting he'll scrap the GST on electricity as he starts outlining his alternative policies. And the Governor-General changes travel plans to stay in Canberra as tensions continue for the Liberal leadership. But first, Parliament House is now being swept with the flurries before the next storm. From this time last night to now, there's been dozens of rumours circulated, hundreds of calls made and every corridor conversation monitored. The one thing, though, that's crystal clear, as long as this stalemate lasts, MPs are dedicated to plotting, not governing. And the longer it lasts, the harder it will be for any Liberal PM to win the coming election. After yesterday's leadership ballot that Peter Dutton lost, but Malcolm Turnbull didn't win by enough to survive, nine frontbenchers, including two cabinet ministers, offered their resignations on the grounds that they had voted for the challenger. It's a sign of how weak the PM is that he couldn't accept these resignations and a sign of how reluctant this challenge is that most of the resignations were offered but not insisted upon. These ministers today all sat on the front bench, despite voting against their leader, who stood at the dispatch box two steps away. Last night, Julie Bishop, that most professionally loyal of loyal deputies, suggested Dutton had been plotting for months. Then there's the usual, we'll blame Abbott for everything brigade in the media. Good try. But forget this place, ask the base, and they'll tell you that this shambles of a mess is Turnbull's own making. It was the Prime Minister who made 30 news poll losses a test of leadership. It was Turnbull who personally declared the Longman by-election. It was a choice between him and Bill Shorten, which he, of course, lost. And it's Turnbull whose climate change virtue signalling has meant that the coalition couldn't devise an energy policy that his own team could support. Say what you like about Peter Dutton... But unlike Malcolm Turnbull, he hasn't spent months softening up the, the incumbent with cabinet leaks while preparing an ambush with every last detail planned, all the weak links secured with bodgy polling and promises of promotion and constant dutchering, duchessing of wavering colleagues. The Dutton challenge is now well and truly underway. But unlike Turnbull's, this one is based on policy and a desperate desire to prevent a Labor win at the upcoming election. For everyone's sake, it needs to come to a head soon because no one is better than Malcolm Turnbull at dirty tricks, as the likely referral of Dutton's eligibility to the Solicitor General shows today. The person who holds Turnbull's fate in his hands is Senate leader and longtime Conservative Matthias Cormann, who today kept people guessing, saying only that he supported the Prime Minister without actually saying the incumbent's name. Today, the Prime Minister's impotence was again on display when he dumped the company tax cuts without having any alternative economic narrative and confirming he won't even take it to the next election. In Parliament, the government was again skewered by Labor with questions to ministers who were forced to assert a loyalty to a leader that everyone knows to be false. Australia deserves so much better. The government is bleeding and the country is despairing. Yes, Dutton is starting to tell us how he would govern with lower power prices and less immigration. It would all be better off if he was doing it, not just talking about it. In the end, Liberal Party, 
This is not about you. It's always been about the country you serve. Now's the time to remember that.